I'm Steph. I'm going to give you a orientation video on the general functions of a travel trailer. Most of all the campers functions are the same. Campers are different. So we're going to start on the back. Nine times out of ten you're going to have a spare tire. Hopefully you don't ever have to use that when you're camping. Nobody wants to change a tire. On this model it is pre-wired for a backup camera. Okay, backup camera is good for observation station security camera automatically turns to night vision. And also we have the cable and satellite hookup on this unit in the rear. Okay, that is if you have cable or satellite at the campground, plug in there, it feeds the trailer throughout. You don't have to run it through a window. Now a little maintenance you need to learn about is the roof. Three times a year you're going to get on the roof, minimum. Okay, twice you're going to check your seals, front, rear, around your bathroom, vent, things like that, you have lap sealing. Lamp sealing is a rubber-based material that adheres to the rubber membrane roof. Over a period of time, it may crack or bubble, so you want to pop the bubbles and then fill over that as well as it cracks twice a year. Once a year, you want to treat your roof, and if you have a slide room, that roof as well, with UV blocker and conditioner, that is a moisturizer to keep the roof rubberized. Okay, we want to make sure we do that part of it. On the outdoor side rear, on this coach we have black tank flush and city connection. So the city connection is where you hook a garden hose up to, feeds water throughout the trailer with no pump necessary. Okay, the black tank flush is a sprinkler system in the black tank to flush it out however many times you would a year. That's to get everything out of the black tank. This coach is a 30 amp service, okay? Plug in there, you plug into the campground, home, things like that. You have power throughout the trailer. We do recommend a surge protector anytime you're plugged into shore power for the simple fact the power will go off, come back on, it can spike and blow circuit boards inside your trailer, such as the uh, refrigerator and as well as the air conditioner. This coach has the strong arms on the scissor jacks. I will demonstrate that on the other side when we get over there. But that is for stabilizing, not lifting or leveling. You want to level the trailer front to rear, side to side, best you can. And then of course put those down so it doesn't move while you're inside. This actually has a door on the rear of this coach as an access point to a bunk room, okay? It does have functioning locks and of course shuts pretty easy. This particular unit has a slide room. We'll go over that portion once we get inside. Part of the maintenance is to make sure you uh, check the air pressure on the tires, and of course, torque the rims down. First couple of trips, because they are new axles, new rims, they will loosen up. They do have grease buddies on them. If you choose to add grease, fantastic. If not, the manufacturer warrant, uh, recommends every 6,000 miles or two years for wear and tear and rust. Now the air pressure on these, if you don't know what it is, up front on your coach, it is labeled right here clearly, 65 PSI. All right, on your slide rooms, which we'll go over the function of it, but you have seals all the way around the outside. You wanna make sure you maintain them seals with rubber seal conditioner once a year to keep them rubberized, that way they don't get brittle, crack, and of course cause water damage. Now, all trailers have at least one black tank and one gray tank. This just happens to have two gray tanks and one black. And of course, you remove the cap, you're gonna dump your black tank first. You're gonna let that drain out. Once it's empty, shut that. You can pull each one separate or all together, okay? Doesn't matter how you do it on the gray tanks, it's just gonna flush everything out of the hose so you can put it back in the rear bumper when you're done. All right, moving towards the front of the coach, and this you have what they call a front compartment, AKA basement, okay? I will go and open the other door so you get a better light. All right, as you can see, you have a little bit more room in there for storage. This unit has a power cord in there and of course some tools that you're going to use to manually crank things if something happened to the power supply, battery, or 
110 that you can crank up and down the jacks. Moving forward to the front of the coach, if you get a convenience pack, you would have a battery installed in a box here, and of course, both propane tanks will be filled full of propane. Now, this unit comes with a battery disconnect. Battery disconnect is to cut the power to the coach when you're not camping or plugged in or pulling, okay? The reason for that is your LP, uh, LP detector inside runs constantly and could kill the battery if not plugged in. So if it's plugged in or you're towing it, make sure you leave the battery disconnect on, that way it charges the battery as you're doing so. This has uh, no regulator that is switchable per tank, it's just a open regulator. So one tank at a time, that way when you run out, you know you still have another tank. So it's just open and closed each of the tanks and it will pressurize the coach with LP. Powered tongue jack on this coach. You do have a nice light here. And of course, up is up and down is down. If something happened, failed for any reason, remove the cap. And inside there you have a crank inside the front compartment that you can crank this manually to get on or off the vehicle or things like that. Moving forward to the other side on the door side, another glimpse at the front compartment area. Now you have your tools. The one located here is for the power tongue jack. And of course this one is for the strong arms if you choose to use it for that. Inside here we do have a light for night if you have to get in there for any reason. This coach does have accessibility to the bunk from underneath or up on top to the front basement area. All right. And of course this unit does come with magnets. Holds the doors open, no plastic clips, things like that. It comes with either or. This coach just comes with magnets. It has the solar panel charger here. Uh, plug in a solar panel into that. It will charge the battery using solar power. That's all it does is charge the battery. You can't run the unit off of it, but you can use it off the battery. So if you can charge it, so be it. Moving more towards the rear, you have your awning. We're gonna go over that momentarily. And the stairs, okay? This unit comes with a compartment with a outside refrigerator, which is 110. It does not run on electric or on gas. It is 110 only. So you have to have power to run this. Cool it down prior to loading it. It should stay cold as you travel. This is for your outside griddle. I will show you how that works. You're gonna pull your griddle out, okay? On the rear of the griddle, in the back you have a quick disconnect, okay? And underneath, you're gonna hook up to the valve there, turn the valve on, of course that runs off the front propane tanks to use the griddle. Make sure it's cooled off, put it back and stow it away. And of course, this has a thumb wheel and one lock to keep it locked as you travel. This does come with an outside spray port. This is cold water only. You will get a slinky hose that plugs into that. You can rinse off feet, dishes, anything you choose to with this. But like I said, cold water only. Now, we've discussed on how to use the um, city connection. This is your freshwater tank fill. So if you're gonna add water on board because you don't have accessibility to water at a campground, you fill this up and you're gonna use your water pump to feed water throughout the tra trailer for water purposes. Now, you do have a drain which is located right between the axles. Okay, it's that light thing right there. We recommend leaving them open, that way they don't draw mold or mildew from condensation during the day and as nighttime. It does also have the furnace outlet. Do not block that with anything, you don't wanna cause any burns or things like that. They do make screens for them to keep the bugs and things out as well. This coach does come with a ventilation outside from the stove area as you're cooking. Also comes with two speakers tied to the radio inside. And if you have plugged into shore power, you do have 110 outlet here as well. 
Last but not least is the water heater. This one is gas and electric. Okay. Now, you want to make sure units come with an anode rod or it comes with a plastic plug. Either or, this one just tip typically comes with an anode rod, which is an inch and one sixteenth. You put that in, you turn the water on, it flows throughout the coach. You want to relieve the valve here to make sure you have water coming out before you turn it on. You do have an electrical button down here to turn it on electric. Inside you have a gas button. If you run both at the same time, it maintains faster, means you get a longer, hotter shower. This six gallon tank just turned into eight and a half to 10 gallon tank. All right, so the rest on the outside, I'm gonna demonstrate in the rear here how to use the leveling scissor, or the scissor jacks and the strong arm. Then we'll proceed inside to show you how the awning and the stairs work. Okay, you wanna make sure on this unit that you unscrew the T-handle to loosen up the strong arm. And then you wanna, you wanna run it down till it's snug. Once you have them all down and snugged, as you go along, you tighten the up the strong arm and that will keep it in position and it does not sway back and forth when you're inside walking around. Simple enough to uh, unhook, unscrew, and of course, raise up when you're ready to, when you are ready to travel again and just make this snug so the bolt don't come out. All right. I'm gonna open the door here, I'm gonna explain the stairs, and then we'll go to the awning. On this unit has the solid step stairs. Two very important things you have to remember on the stairs. Doors all the way open, it has these arms here that on this side would ding up the door jam, so you wanna make sure the door is open. Second of all, the black and the silver are flat as possible. For the simple fact is when you shut your door, you don't want to bend up the whole bottom rail and cause an air leak. All right, so once you get this all leveled and flat, if you have to adjust for uneven ground, you can remove the pins located right here and adjust the legs up or down for uneven ground. All right, so now the last thing on the outside is the awning. This particular awning is 20 feet long, comes out 8 feet 2 inches, which I'll show you how it operates, but as you travel, it does bounce, okay? Over a period of time, it'll start to bow in the center because of the weight of the awning and, of course, of the heat from the sun. So we do offer an awning cradle that supports that awning as it's in a closed position for traveling and just sitting. So it is recommended to have it, that way you don't have to replace the tube over a couple of periods of years. That way it is stabilized. I'm gonna go in and run it out and I will show you how that is done. Right inside you have a button that says in or out. So we're gonna run this out. Okay, as you can see it's moving outward. It's all done by power. As you run it out, the valence will drop down or you will see a sticker in the far left corner. Take your finger off the button, that way it doesn't roll inside out backwards. Right there, that is full extended right now. All right, on this unit, most of all arms have a pivot point here for rain runoff. Either it's this style or it's a bolt and nut style, okay? This style is very cool because there's no um, action you need to take to loosen up or tighten. All you do is pull this down. And of course, you can see that it would tilt towards the front. You can do, do either front or rear to make sure you have rain runoff. Or if you wanna do both, as you can see, it tilts it down. If the sun was coming down in the evening, you can tilt down the back as well. And of course, give you a little bit more shape. Now, you want to 
put the awning back in the full extension part on the arms before rolling it in. That way you don't cause any damage and it rolls up evenly. So make sure that you put them back in the flat position. before rolling it in. All right, this one does come with awning lights, okay, and they're located on the side of the trailer, and it's done by a switch right inside the door here. All right, we're gonna run this back in, and inside your coach you have your main panel. So you have your awning switch, your slide room, lights for your awning, and of course, this is for the night light over the slide room. On your board, you have your water pump and your water heater. Okay, super nice because outside's electric, inside is gas. On this model, you have battery, push and hold, fresh water, black water, gray, and galley. Most panels come Standard with each coach, some other has extra buttons that are not needed, such as if this only had one gray tank, it would have this button as well, but it does not do anything. So not all panels are for the entire coach, so you have to make sure which ones are working. All right, by the door you have a fire extinguisher. We put them by the door to extinguish your shorts as you run out because insurance will pay for everything else. On this unit has push button lights. Okay, in the center here, you have a little knob. You wanna push that on, okay? We're going to run the slide room out now so you can see how that functions, okay? You're gonna push and hold the button and of course, wait till it goes out. All right, it is fully extended outward. We're gonna go through, as we go along, we will turn the lights on. Like I said, each light in this unit has push button lights. All right, here we have your kitchen area. It does have 110 outlets, accessible for coffee makers, mixers, anything you have there. Storage throughout. Okay, and of course, campers come with all the paperwork somewhere in a drawer or a cabinet in the kitchen area. This one happens to have drawers. Some have one, some have two to four. Okay, so it just depends on the coach. And of course, this does have storage underneath the sink. This one has a metal shade, okay? They put metal by the stove area on all trailers for the simple fact it's next to fire, it has to be metal. On this unit has a uh, three burner stove top with a glass cover. Now that's for extra counter space purposes, but you wanna make sure it's down for travel, that way it stays glass. If you have to open it up, just fold it towards the back and you have a small backsplash. Not all units have igniting purposes for the stove top. Some you have to light it with a lighter. But this one does come with an igniter that you're just going to click as you have it on the temperature you need it. Most of them start easier on high. Once it's lit, use it and then shut it off. This one has an oven button. Okay, This one you're going to hold on the flame as you use the igniter. And as it lights, you're gonna let go and turn it to your designated temperature. Once you're done, shut it off. You have to relight it each time because the pilot does go out. This one does have some nice lights around the knobs for a night light so you're not tripping on the way to the restroom if you have a dark campground. This one does have an oven, which is very nice. Fold down the glass. Before you travel, you wanna make sure it stays glass. You do have fan and light above the stove for ventilation as you cook and light if you want it. And 
standard size RV microwave. Not big enough for turkey dinner, but it's nice enough to preheat coffee or even have popcorn for movie night. On this unit, we have the refrigerator. The refrigerator is 12 volt. It runs off the battery. Okay, super easy. You plug in the coach. It's charging the battery, so you don't have to worry about it. But this one is 12 volt. And it is a separated refrigerator freezer and it is 10.8 cubic inch. The easiest way you want to plug in your coach, cool it down 24 hours before loading. As you're pulling it, it's charging the battery so you're not really using it because the refrigerator is already cooled down. After you load it, you want to make sure that you latch it for travel. That way your food stays in it and it is not all over the floor. Most campers come with pantries. Some are bigger than others, and some have lights and some don't. But this is where all the happiness happens because you get to put all your snacks in here. All right. In this unit, this is where your water pump is at. And of course, this is the access to your water heater. Right down here, most coaches that have a sticker, that's where your uh, water pump will be located for winterize and dewinterize uh, functions, okay? I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna open this panel and show you your water heater. Go. All right, we're back, I have the panels open. On this side, you have your water pump. This is all your access area to the water pump, if anything happened, or to winterize, things like that. Now, this is actually in the winterize mode right now. That's how I have it demonstrated. You don't want any antifreeze or water to go in your water heater. So the water comes in this way. As you can see, the valve is in line. It's going gonna to make a loop and go right back out. So it never goes in the water heater right now. Now, once you dewinterize or during the summer months, you're going to have it facing towards the water heater. So you want to turn these towards the water heater like that. And of course, now it's going to come in here, go into the tank come out of the tank and go throughout the coach. This is standard procedure on how to dewinterize a coach. After you get all the antifreeze out, you want the valves to look like this. In the fall, when you go to winterize, you wanna make sure they're pointing the opposite direction so you have no water or animal antifreeze going in the water heater. All right, so that's it for here. We're gonna continue on with the orientation. All right, inside here we have uh, your, <laughs> all right, the thermostat. A little hard to see right here, but you do have this bottom button. You can see it says off. Next button will be fan, cool. You wanna make sure it runs on auto. That way it automatically turns on or off. You can have low or high fan. Next is heat and next is off. Thermostat up and down, it starts at 33 degrees on the downward, 99 as the high on the upside for the furnace. All right, below that is your LP detector. Make sure the green light is on all the time as you're inside the coach because if it does not work and the light is off, if you acquire a gas leak in your travels, that is not good news because that ends in bad news. So always make sure the green light is working on your LP detector. All right, follow me into the bunk room. We have more lights. Now, this is kind of a cool setup in this model. It has upper bunks and a lower bunk with the ability to have a um, sofa. So, if you wanted to have them up out of the way, Just push these up. They do have shocks. We don't recommend traveling with them up here, but the simple fact is if they fall down, they could break up the rails and things like that. But if you want to use just the lower bunk area, this is kind of nice. Now, this mattress does fold up and out of the way. This comes up and makes a sofa. All right, so we have to get this out of the way. Kind of 
like so. And of course, now you can see the sofa. This is kind of cool because then you have the upper and you can have a TV on the wall, things like that. You have coax and 110. And this unit does come with 12 volt on both sides to charge cell phones and things like that. So you can leave it like this for travel. It does not hurt anything. And of course, your bunks do come back down. And you can use the upper bunks for two bunks by themselves. All right. Does have storage in here as well with storage totes. And this is where your power box is located in this trailer. Inside here you have your 110 side and of course your 12 volt side. Just carry some extra 15 amp fuses if anything happened. No private investigator needed when you have to worry about a fuse blowing because on this side of the fuses is a real little red light. Say this fuse is blown, light on that side will be on. Remove the fuse, put a new one in, the light goes out, and of course, you're back to camping. All right, this does have a pocket door in this unit. You want to make sure that it's fastened. That way it stays in the pocket. It doesn't break off the rails. It does have a magnet to hold for your privacy. All right. We're going to continue to the dinette area. Now, all your shades are pulled down in this model. For your privacy, pull them down. If you don't choose to have them down during the day and you want all the daylight, just give them a tug and let go. Something like that, of course. Let's get this out here a little bit better. Well, apparently this one does not work. All right, well, that's a malfunction. So that makes me look like, you know, don't know what I'm doing. But that will be fixed before the customer takes it. This one's similar as that. Just give it a tug and it retracts by itself. All right. Now, this does have storage underneath on both sides. And this unit does come with more storage totes. This one's pretty cool, as in the dinette shape, okay? This is kind of like a multi-functioning dinette. They call this a U-shape. If you want to fold it down to a bed, super easy. You're going to remove the legs off the table and the floor, lay them down, and of course set the table on here. Now, this one's kind of cool on the way it's set up. As you see, you got a U-shaped dinette, but your couch is to the right. All right, this is kind of different. Let's make the couch a couch first. All right, so you can see how it looks, but if you want a bigger couch and a smaller dinette, this one's pretty neat. We're going to remove a couple of cushions. Okay, we're going to take these ones off. And we're going to pivot them around to this side. All right. Now you can see that it's kind of like a bigger couch instead of a dinette. And of course, now you have a little bit bigger couch. So this model is pretty cool on that perspective. Not all trailers do that. This is a couch sofa. It does fold down to a bed as well. And it does have storage underneath. All right, we're gonna head in towards this way. We're going to stop in the master suite. Does have a fire exit window over here. Okay. Anything has a red handle, you just remove the handle or remove the screen and push the window outward. And of course, super easy to do that. All right. And this unit has 12 volt on both sides and it does have 110 you just can't see it inside the cupboards is where your 12 volt is located and it has access through to the inside so if you had to you could put an alarm clock things like that in there 
and it's inside the compartment where you hang your clothes and of course storage above. Both cabinets are the same in this unit. You do have storage underneath as well. This one's got the access, like I said earlier, to underneath the front basement. And this one comes with storage and places for your shoes underneath. All right. In this corner, we have a nice little closet as well with a light on the ceiling. You can put a TV in here if you choose to. There's a backer in the wall, 110 and coax. All right, we're gonna mosey on back out to the bathroom area. All right, come on in. A little close for comfort, but we can make it happen. Your toilet has a little indicator right there, but super enough, hit the foot pedal right here in the back push halfway down and of course it puts water in the bowl push it all the way down it goes down this model has a vanity for some accessories and of course has a little strap to hold it closed this is what they call the fan fantastic right cranker open Hit the button, turn the fan on. All right, most people buy max air covers to go on here so you can leave the vent open for ventilation all year round. And all you gotta do is turn the switch on and off for the fan. You don't have to open and close. All right. Storage. Looks like it's almost perfect size for toilet paper. Unfortunately, there's no toilet paper. All right, last but not least is the shower. This right here is for travel. Make sure it's around here because it has a magnet that goes down the side to hold it shut as you shower. It does have a nice skylight if the sun was out. And of course the shower is right there. Just make sure that you fasten it in place before you travel, okay? And of course, it does have storage underneath the sink. Back out to the entertainment center. This unit does not come with a television, but you can put a television on here, okay? Super nice, because it will stay flat up against the wall as your slide room is in. Has little access points to run cables down through to hook up to 110, and of course your TV antenna. The little green light you can see up here, that is your TV antenna booster, okay? If it was off, you would not get any local channels wherever you're camping. So you wanna make sure the green light is on and then you can do a scan. This does come with a sound bar in this one. And of course it's AM, FM, Bluetooth capability. Zones one is the sound bar. Zone two will be your speakers outside. You can run them both at the same time or vice versa, one at a time. This unit comes with a fireplace, which is great because it will heat the coach on electricity. It is not gas. It just put these 110 to operate. All right. We'll give you a little preview on how it works. It's pretty cool. All right. You can see that's blinking H. That means high fan. Okay. If you want a low fan, you have low fan. So you have low fan, high fan, or no fan. This is just the ambiance of the fireplace. All right. You can change the colors of the rocks on this one. And of course you do have a timer, 30 minutes up to five hours. All right, now if you use th this portion, you can only change the fan speed. On the remote, you can change the temperature from 65 to 95 degrees. Once it shuts off, the fan kicks in for cool down. Once it cools down, it automatically shuts itself down. All right, and of course this one comes with a coat hanger. All right, well, we had to pause it to get things out of our way. We're gonna go over some paperwork and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, go over some warranty options. All right, we do give these to our customers, regular maintenance, thanks for full hookup. And of course on the back, our options page. Options are things you can add on to a trailer. Okay, observation station, which is a backup camera, screens, slide toppers, awning cradle, vent covers, surge protector, lend hands, power jacks, 
things like that all malta for multiple coaches okay and then down here we do have interior exterior and extended warranty now the warranty on most coaches range from one year to two years after that we do offer a warranty that goes up to six so you could have up to seven or eight years worth of warranty which covers you for a long period of time of buying a camper the finance people usually go over that during signing so that is a good thing but this one that we have the camera on now is our ceramic coating this is outside because on your maintenance it says to wax your camper twice a year to keep the finish the way it is if you don't ever have time to wax all you have to do is wash with the ceramic coating okay it covers you from rain acid bird droppings black streaks fading all that stuff as you can see right here now if you purchase slide toppers with your unit or if not you still have an awning it covers you for these things here which is fading discoloring or cracking if that ever happened in five years they would replace it for you now the ceramic coating is a one-time application we we apply it and of course you protect it for five years you don't have to bring it back nothing like that as you can see here on the side it would cover all these items here in the exterior portion okay the inside is basically the same as the outside it's just for fabric instead of paint okay now everything that's cloth leather or vinyl is sprayed with scotch guard and it covers you for these items here so in all reality it covers you for dyes leeches crayons makeup bodily fluids pets included and of course stitching okay if stitching comes loose if they can't fix it they replace it gouges tears a little less than six inches the same thing so it is a great warranty to have because then you don't have to worry about any accidents especially on the inside well on behalf of us we hope you enjoyed the tour hope you learned a lot of things and of course we hope you enjoy camping so other than that have a wonderful day